Avoid getting closed in three simple steps. It's reaction time as we react to Andy Elliott's three simple steps to close every deal. Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, the homework guy, and author of Is That the Best You Can Do? You have arrived at the home of super high intensity training for car buyers. Today, I'm joined by the amazing Elizabeth as we react to these three steps Andy Elliott is proposing that a car salesman uses to close every deal. Pay close attention. Andy is going to talk about control and then a dominant buying motive and then, of course, asking for the sale at the end. As our followers know, the Homework Guide channel prepares car buyers with research and homework to do before the sale and specific car buying strategies, and we want to let you know what to be aware of. By reacting to this video, we're not saying that sales techniques are bad. We're simply sharing with you, the car buyer, how to stay in control of your own car deal. So let's roll. Andy Elliott's three simple steps to close every deal. So in this video, I'm going to teach you three simple steps to close every sales deal. Now, listen, yep, I want you to understand said. this, okay? What I like to do, this is a whiteboard. Everybody knows Andy Elliott for whiteboard work. I love it. It's an easy way Doesn't to everybody teach know us and for to teach hypotheticals. So, I, I, yeah, right we put everything on the whiteboard. This is how you do it. In this one, I'm going to show you kind of like a graph. Let's just take a line here real quick. And if you've ever been around a great closer, a great salesperson, they've probably taught you some strategies to do well. Well, number one, let's really just... quickly, you guys, I apologize for that annoying music in the background, but that is always on Andy Elliott's video, not ours. We never do that to you. Let's talk about this. This is going to be open, okay? This is going to be where the cell would open, right? Like you meet somebody, okay? Whether it's on the phone or in person, whatever. This is going to be the close. This is very simple to understand because this is the timeline of a deal. It's that easy. So number one, sell step number one. How do you take control at the beginning? Sell step number one. This is the, the first tip. You got to take control within the first two or three seconds. I didn't say two or three minutes. I said two Pay or attention. three seconds, all right? Look, if you can't take control right out the gate, all right? Which means when I meet somebody, I'm like, man, how you doing? Hey, number one, welcome to the store. Welcome to my home. I'm so Okay, I'm going to pause here for a moment because I want to explain to people or share with people how this control thing happens. So let me let me ask you this. How do you plan to pay? What brought you in today? What do you think your trade is worth? What am I doing? You're asking questions. Whoever's asking the questions, they're the ones in control. That is exactly right. So all of this litany of questions that happens right away, it creates some mental confusion for you, but it also controls you right away within the first few seconds of the deal. So that is what Andy is talking about, how to gain control of the deal right out of the gate. And this is where you have to stop and, and have your goals and objectives clearly laid out that you came there to accomplish that day and say, hey, wait a minute, stop, stop, stop. This is what I wanna do. And then you start leading. So glad you're here. Hey, what's going on? With my eyes, with my tonality, with my voice, with my body language, with all of my being, I'm not welcoming to a dealership or a store. I'm welcoming them to my home. This is nothing my wrong place. with being welcoming. Glad you're here. I show massive amounts of love, and guess what happens? I will start to take control, and they will follow me. Okay? But if you walk up like a coffin, dead asleep, hey, how are you doing? How can I help you guys? I have to say something about his use of the word love. So he says, show the massive amount of love. Now, you know when somebody actually loves you, it's pretty easy to tell. Yeah. You know how you find out if your car salesman loves you? Show up a week later, tell them you got you know a, a tire pressure problem or you want something checked out in your car. You find out immediately yeah. how much they care about you, which is a big goose egg. Look, I'm gonna tell you right now, they're gonna interrupt you and they're gonna take control. That's step one. Step one. Yes, right that's step. what you should do. Yes, that's like that's the homework guy viewer right there. Else, you should okay? take control in immediately. In the first two or three seconds, we're taking control. So we're gonna put here, take control, okay? All right, so after you go and you lead them, which is what taking control is, guess what? You'll be able to go into part two. This is part one, part two, which is gonna be really simple. Go through and go through some fact, find, qualify. You can call it intelligence questions. Look, find out some stuff about your customer, about why they're here today, so number one, you can surface their dominant buying motive. Write that down. Look, dominant. Okay, what does dominant mean? That means the number one thing, their dominant buying motive, all right? Now look, I want you to think about this real quick, okay? If somebody's trading in the car, and maybe this time they want something. Nothing wrong with fact, find, qualify. Right. Everybody should do that in their sales process. 
He's talking about a dominant buying motive. So give an example of some dominant buying motives. You know, maybe you're having another baby and you need a third row seat. Maybe you just bought a camper and you need to have more towing capacity, a better fuel economy. It, the, the list goes on. You need more room in your vehicle or space or seats or, or anything. It's connected to something called need, needs, yeah. which is totally different than a nice to have. So he's encouraging the salesman to um, flush out what your actual needs are. And even more importantly, he's looking for the trigger that can get you to buy a car today. So nothing wrong with the fact, try and qualify. Just know that if you're not the one leading this whole process, you should have come there with all of your stuff laid out and driving the process yourself. Well, if you didn't do that, well then they're the one in control. So again, nothing wrong with fact, find, qualify, but you be the person who's doing the fact, find, And you could qualify. have done that in the first two seconds. Hey, I saw you have two different third vehicles with th third row seats. That's what I'm interested in. Let's go drive those cars. You yes. could have, you could have opened like with that as the customer. Find out where they are and start heading to the vehicles. Yeah. A little bit bigger, something that sits a little higher off the ground, better safety, lower miles, right? Better gas mileage, it's gonna get better. It has a warranty on it now, their old car doesn't. Maybe redesigned body style, looks a little bit nicer, rides smoother. I don't, it has more options. Look, all those things could be great, and I will sell all of those things, but maybe there could be a dominant buying motive, right? Something that's really important to them. And something like that would be, hey, we're having another kid. We've got three kids, we're having another kid, we're in a car, we need a third row. It's not an option not to have a third row vehicle from this point forward. So that's what the dominant buying motive is. It's something right. that's not optional in the vehicle. And like I said, connected to a need. They got to have one. That is a dominant. That means that all the other things are great. And all those other things that you sell them on, they can envision them wanting on their new vehicle. And that can make them want to pay more money, right? Because you're increasing the value. But the dominant buying motive would be, they got to have another seat. It's the most important thing to them. So part two needs to be this. Learn how to ask great questions. Okay? Learn how to gra ask great Great strategy. Questions. Look, people have problems. Okay? You want to make every sale go down? Very good strategy learn how to ask great questions. But you, the car buyer, you learn to ask really great, great questions. You drive the process and you be the one asking all the great questions. Make them have to operate and do the sales process on your terms, mm -hmm. not theirs. Find people's problem and solve them. It's that easy, that's how you get paid, okay? Well, how are you gonna do that? Well, number one, you gotta have control. And then when you have control, when you ask great questions, what will they do? They'll happily answer all of your questions. Now let's go. So what he's talking about here is number one, taking control right in the beginning, asking great questions. And when you have control and you're asking great questions, that the person is happy to answer those questions. Here's the thing. When you are controlling the deal and you are asking great questions, watch your salesman quickly become the answer person for all your questions. So it's, it's the same deal that he's talking about right here, only it's on your terms it's on the other side. and the ball is in your court. I think they call that order taker. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So do you see how that works? You definitely want to force your salesman to become an order taker for you. For the last part, let's say that they say this car right here, by all the information you found, right? Look at that beautiful car. You gathered all this information and you go show them this vehicle. You're excited about it. You're jacked up. You're happy. Man, you're, you feel like... Don't be jacked up. Don't be excited. Don't be happy. Be logical, please. Yes. So it's fine. I'm not saying that you can't be. And yeah, everybody should be excited about their car deal. But the more emotions you put into this, the dumber your decisions will be. Guaranteed. Like a, a billionaire. You're just telling them like, gosh, man, isn't this nice? Look how awesome this is. I'm so glad you're here. Your family's amazing. Based on everything you told me, this is the perfect vehicle. Let's go drive it. You ask for their business. Everybody's excited. And what are you going to do? After driving the car, you're going to ask for the business. Now watch this. Look at this. Asking for their business in the close, you're getting pretty close to finishing the deal. Look, you're two thirds of the way. Yes, two you are. Two thirds. If you can just do these first two right, all you gotta worry about is this last one and your goal. So what do you do right here? Well, you're gonna ask for their business. 
Hey, let me ask you, if I could get the deal 110% to your satisfaction, right? Would you want to take it home? Maybe that's you. Maybe you're like, hey guys, look, it looks like you love the vehicle. You said you love the way you drove. Look, man, how do you want to title the new vehicle? In your name or in my These are all just Hit them with the old title closes. Closes. Doesn't yeah. matter to me. You're hitting them with the little trial codes, and guess what they tell you? They tell you no, okay? Now, when they say no, you guys know I'm the king of overcoming objections. That's what I... I'm going to stop here because there's a really important thing for me, for Liz, for anybody on the homework guy team, any savvy car buyer I know, but I'm going to speak for myself personally. I have never, ever said no to a car salesman more than once because the moment I come to a point where I'm done and I say no, what do I do? You walk out. Walk out. The, the, the thing is, is you walk out, you go home. There's nothing but nonsense going to happen after that first no. Nothing but nonsense. So it's all around trying to go back to your uh, control issues, going back to your questions, trying to find your hot buttons. It's all of that stuff. When you said no because you're not ready to do a car deal today or your homework isn't done or something isn't to your satisfaction, don't ever stay and listen to the rest of this nonsense. Now, listen to all the nonsense that Andy Ellett's going to feed you here in the next couple of minutes. I do. I live in that zone. I'm battle tested. I train for two or three hours every day. So should you. But guess what? Let's say the guy says, hey, appreciate it, Andy. Look, me and my wife, we just need to get out of here and we need to talk about it. And then you go into the wife clothes or you go into the we need to think about it clothes or the we need to talk about it clothes. And you go to overcome it. Once they say no, you <laughs> always overcome it. Okay? But if you can't, Listen to me, listen, pay close attention. This is the most important part on number three. If they say no again, look, notice I said again, which means a second time, you don't need to ask why again. At that point, that'll be irritating. Look, here's what you do. No, overcome it. You should be able to move on with the deal and go here. But if they say, no, Andy, we appreciate it, man, but we really feel like we truly need to think about it together. At that point, I'm not going to ask for their business again. Write this down. Don't ask for their business again after two no's. What you need to do is you need to circle around again. Circle. See right here? Questions. What questions did we ask? I'm going to go back to early on within the deal when I went to my investigating stage. And guess what they did? They, asked, they, they told me some answers. Back to looking for the triggers. Yep. So all those things that were your needs that are your dominant buying motives, back to the triggers. You shouldn't be in the building anymore, but we'll carry on. I'm going to ask some questions about what they needed. And I'm going to circle real quick and I'm going to sell everything that they told me back to them within 30 seconds. Okay? Follow me. So the guy's like, I'm like, hey man, if I could get the deal right, would you be happy to take it home? Andy, appreciate it. We really need to think about it. Okay, cool. Listen, of course you need to think about it. Look, I haven't given enough information not to think about it. Look, what I would like to do, give you a quick five-minute proposal of all the numbers. That way, when you go home, you got something to think about. All right, he wants so you, you get to come the idea. Inside. Yeah. You get the idea of all the nonsense. The five-minute presentations, never five minutes. Uh, take it times 10. That's 50 minutes or maybe it's two hours. Yeah. But never buy any of that stuff. So... Anything else that you want to give uh, people here on this uh, video at all, Liz? Well, use an ounce of prevention. So if you have your homework in front of you and you say, you, you know, discuss with your spouse, what I really, what we really need is a third row seat. That's the reason we're going to look for a car. That's everything. Okay. When a salesman approaches you, don't let them take control right away. You ask the question, we're looking for a third row seat vehicle. There's two or three models in your lot we'd like to drive. Can we do that right away? Have them identified already. Yep, identify, like go to their website, get the little numbers on the keys and say, these key numbers, I'd like to drive these three vehicles. And you know, when they start going into asking all these litany of questions, you just say, stop, I have my own questions and, and hit yep. them with the questions that you have. And nothing wrong with writing them down, having them on a notepad, whatever, sure. but you start asking the questions. And then when it's time, you know, and you, they ask for your for your business and you're like, well, there's a few things that we need to think about. So we're not ready to buy right now. Then you just need to go. I mean, if the vehicles are still there and it's meant to be and that's the one for you, great. You can come back tomorrow or next week and you can finish the deal. That's, all, that's right. So it's time to hit the road. The minute you're inclined to say no, time to hit the road. 
If you appreciate this reaction video to help you stay in control of your own cardio, consider giving us that great big thumbs up and leave a comment down below. Include hashtag the homework guy and look for us on any of your favorite social media platforms out there. There's a list on the screen and they're linked in the description box below. And if you love what we do and want to contribute with a tip, well, PayPal and Cash App links that you see here will be easy to find in that description box below. But no problem if you can't leave a tip. What's the best way for our viewers to help us out, Liz? Hey, help us get the word out. You want your friends and family to get lucky just like you, right? Right. So put this video up so others can see it and do their homework. Encourage them to subscribe and ring that notification bell so you don't miss a thing. We're here to represent you guys, the car buyers. And so we're not objecting to sales techniques. We're just here to represent you yep. and help you get the best deal. And that's exactly what we do. Well, thanks everyone for coming back. We'll see you on our next video. You guys rock. I'm Kevin Hunter here with the amazing Elizabeth. We, we gotta, gotta go. go.